We are used to making clones of the Instagram reel. We can even make clones of living organisms. But is there a fundamental limit to what we can clone? We are talking about physics here, and making an exact clone would mean copying every quantum property exactly, including its position, momentum, spin, energy, and everything. Bummingly, there is a no-cloning theorem in quantum mechanics, which forbids you from cloning perfectly. While this shatters any mad scientist's dream of making his own clone, it turns out we can actually use the no-cloning theorem in our favor. Suppose you want to message your crush, but you don't want her crazy ex to find out about it. You can encode your message into a quantum particle. Her crazy ex can't copy it. Your message is, therefore, perfectly secured. This is the idea behind the famous quantum key distribution protocol. In this video, we'll give a simple proof of the no-cloning theorem, the dramatic history behind it, and generalizations and applications of the theorem. Like in every genuine quantum experiment, we'll start with Schrodinger's cat. Schrodinger's cat can be in three possible states. First, we can put a live cat in the box. Next, we could put a dead cat. We have not put a poison bomb in yet, which we'll do now. Crucially, the poison bomb will blast with some probability. If there is a 50% probability of the bomb blasting, then the Schrodinger's cat is in a state of 50% dead and 50% alive. We'll call this the zombie cat, which is a state both dead and alive at the same time. This is the third state. Our goal is to construct a machine capable of cloning the exact state of the cat within this box. If the cat is in a dead state, the cloned box should be in a dead state as well. More importantly, if the cat is in a zombie state, say 20% dead and 80% alive, the copy must also be a zombie cat with exactly the same percentage. It turns out that's an impossible task. And of course, we can't peek inside the box before putting it in the machine. Otherwise, it will collapse the state of the zombie cat into a dead or alive state. Schrodinger's cat has a real experimental analogy. An atom's ground state can be considered a dead cat, while the excited state is an alive cat. Moreover, when we have the superposition of the ground and excited state, it's like having a zombie cat. Therefore, a cloning machine should take an atom and be able to clone the ground state, excited state, and the superposition of states perfectly. The cloning machine itself has an input state and a blank state. The blank state should be independent of the input state without any prior knowledge of the input state. If the cloning machine is perfect, this blank state should be exactly the same as the input state. The history of the no-cloning theorem might be even more interesting than the theorem itself. We'll give a short version here, and maybe in the future, make a detailed video. It is really interesting. Nick Herbert, a member of the physics hippie group, proposed a scheme for sending signals faster than the speed of light using quantum entanglement. Asher Pires, a prominent physicist of his time, knew that the paper was wrong, but still accepted it for publication. He argued that the paper would prompt further discussion. The refutation of Herbert's ideas led to the development of the no-cloning theorem later. We're all inborn mathematicians, so let's try to prove the theorem. Jokes aside, the math is really not that hard. Moreover, we'll provide materials in the description if you wish to go further. Mathematically, our cloning machine is a big matrix, U, that takes the input quantum state and returns the final quantum state. In quantum mechanics, this matrix is called a unitary matrix. What is a unitary matrix? It's just a matrix that preserves the probability, and smarter people than us have figured out how it all works. For us, what's important is that this unitary matrix is linear. This linearity property of the unitary matrix doesn't allow cloning. We'll denote the dead, alive, and zombie cat with these weird Dirac notations. 
the one-half square root 2 indicates that the cat has a 50% chance of being alive and a 50% chance of being dead. Next, we have the blank state, which has no information about the input state. Now, let's see what happens if we feed the Schrodinger's box into the machine together with the blank state. If the cat is dead, we expect the output to be two dead cat states. And if the cat is alive, we expect two live cats. This is all nice. This machine can perfectly clone a dead cat and a live cat. But what happens if we feed a zombie cat into the cloning machine? We expect the cloning machine to satisfy something like this. But let's see what actually happens. We get this output state after passing the blank quantum state and the zombie cat state into the machine. One way to interpret this output state is by saying there is a 50% probability that both cats are dead or alive. If you open those two output boxes, both cats are dead or both cats are alive. But this is in contradiction to what we expect out of the cloning machine. If it was a true cloning machine, then there would be a 25% probability that one cat is dead and the other cat is alive. These extra cross terms of a dead cat and an alive cat destroy the perfect cloning. This concludes our little proof of the no cloning theorem. What is true is that you can only design cloning machines that can clone orthogonal states. The dead cat and the alive cat are orthogonal to each other. Furthermore, if you have a cloning machine that can clone zombie cats perfectly, the same machine will not be able to clone dead and alive cats. This is because the superposition of two zombie cats can be alive, just like a superposition of dead and alive cats is a zombie cat. So, this logic goes both ways. This also answers why we can copy digital information on our computers. 0 and 1 are orthogonal states, and we are perfectly allowed to clone them. But even classically, there is a version of the no-cloning theorem. This is because you can't get the information about the entire probability distribution from a single sample. And finally, the no-cloning theorem is linked with the famous Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. If you could measure all quantum state properties with unlimited accuracy, you could produce arbitrarily accurate clones. On the other hand, if you could copy a state unlimited times, you could learn all its properties with arbitrary accuracy. There is also a no-deleting theorem, which is the opposite of no-cloning. Basically, it says that given two copies of some arbitrary quantum state, it is impossible to delete one of the copies. The no-cloning and the no-deleting theorems point to the conservation of quantum information. To create a copy, one must import the information from some part of the universe. And to delete a state, one needs to export it to another part of the universe where it will continue to exist. One can generalize the no-cloning theorem to the no-broadcast theorem. If you have the entire quantum system, we call it a pure state. We just proved that we cannot clone an arbitrary pure quantum state. But how about if you have only a part of the entire quantum system? This part is called mixed state. It turns out that you cannot clone a mixed quantum state either. This generalization is called the broadcast theorem. While we cannot clone quantum states perfectly, we can clone them partially. This has security consequences when you use quantum protocols for communication. In this final section, we'll review some of the consequences and applications of the no-cloning theorem. Error correction is vital in both classical and quantum computing and communication. The first step in error correction usually involves copying what you want to protect multiple times. Unfortunately, this is forbidden in quantum computing. However, people have devised a genius way of correcting quantum errors using entanglement. No cloning, strangely, prevents us from communicating faster than light. If you could clone, using entanglement, you could communicate superluminally, as discussed in the history section. 
it is really surprising how features of quantum mechanics, such as linearity, prevent it from breaking relativity, which a priori has nothing to do with quantum mechanics. Let's conclude this video with good news. It's an application related to quantum key distribution. Having a private key between two parties allows secure communication between them. One way to encode a private key is in quantum states. A malicious party, Eve, will be unable to clone the quantum key transmitted, so it will not be able to learn the information. This provides you with a secure way of communicating.